Chapter Seventeen: Mutual Obligations. The two who unite their interest in life will have distinct characteristics and individual responsibilities. Each one will have his or her work, but women are not to be valued by the amount of work they can do as beasts of burden. The wife is to grace the family circle as a wife and companion to a wise husband. At every step, she should inquire. Is this the standard of true womanhood? And how can I make my influence Christ-like in my home? The husband should let his wife know that he appreciates her work. The wife is to respect her husband. The husband is to love and cherish his wife. And as their marriage vow unites them as one, so their belief in Christ should make them one in Him. What can be more pleasing to God than to see those who enter into the marriage relation seek together to learn of Jesus and to become more and more imbued with His Spirit? You now have duties to perform that before your marriage you did not have. Put on, therefore, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering. Walk in love as Christ also hath loved us. Give careful study to the following instruction: Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands, as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church, and gave Himself for it. God's instruction to Eve. Eve was told of the sorrow and pain that must henceforth be her portion, and the Lord said, "Thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee." In the creation, God had made her the equal of Adam. Had they remained obedient to God in harmony with His great law of love, they would ever have been in harmony with each other. But sin had brought discord, and now their union could be maintained and harmony preserved only by submission on the part of the one or the other. Eve had been the first in transgression, and she had fallen into temptation by separating from her companion, contrary to the divine direction. It was by her solicitation that Adam sinned. And she was now placed in subjection to her husband. Had the principles enjoined in the law of God been cherished by the fallen race, this sentence, though growing out of the results of sin, would have proved a blessing to them. But man's abuse of the supremacy thus given him has too often rendered the lot of woman very bitter, and made her life a burden. Eve had been perfectly happy by her husband's side in her Eden home, but like restless modern Eves, she was flattered with the hope of entering a higher sphere than that which God had assigned her. In attempting to rise above her original position, she fell far below it. A similar result will be reached by all who are unwilling to take up cheerfully their life's duties. In accordance with God's plan, wives submit, husbands love. The question is often asked: Shall a wife have no will of her own? The Bible plainly states that the husband is the head of the family. Wives submit yourselves unto your own husbands. If this injunction ended here, we might say. That the position of the wife is not an enviable one; it is a very hard and trying position in many cases, and it would be better were there fewer marriages. 
Many husbands stop at the words, Wives, submit yourselves. But we will read the conclusion of the same injunction, which is, As it is fit in the Lord. God requires that the wife shall keep the fear and glory of God ever before her. Entire submission is to be made only to the Lord Jesus Christ, who has purchased her as his own child by the infinite price of his life. God has given her a conscience, which she cannot violate with impunity. Her individuality cannot be merged into that of her husband, for she is the purchase of Christ. It is a mistake to imagine that with blind devotion she is to do exactly as her husband says in all things, when she knows that in so doing injury would be worked for her body and her spirit. There is one who stands higher than the husband to the wife. It is her Redeemer. And her submission to her husband is to be rendered as God has directed, as it is fit in the Lord. When husbands require the complete subjection of their wives, declaring that women have no voice or will in the family, but must render entire submission, they place their wives in a position contrary to the Scripture. In interpreting the Scripture in this way, they do violence to the design of the marriage institution. This interpretation is made simply that they may exercise arbitrary rule which is not their prerogative. But we read on, Husbands, love your wives, and be not bitter against them. Why should the husband be bitter against his wife? If the husband has found her erring and full of faults, bitterness of spirit will not remedy the evil. Wives subject only as husbands are subject to to Christ. The Lord Jesus has not been correctly represented in his relation to the church by many husbands in their relation to their wives, for they do not keep the way of the Lord. They declare that their wives must be subject to them in everything, but it was not the design of God that the husband should have control as head of the house when he himself does not submit to Christ. He must be under the rule of Christ, that he may represent the relation of Christ to the church. If he is a coarse, rough, boisterous, egotistical, harsh, and overbearing man, let him never utter the word that the husband is the head of the wife, and that she must submit to him in everything. For he is not the Lord. He is not the husband in the true significance of the term. Husbands should study the pattern and seek to know what is meant by the symbol presented in Ephesians, the relation Christ sustains to the church. The husband is to be as a savior in his family. Will he stand in his noble, God-given manhood, ever seeking to uplift his wife and children? Will he breathe about him a pure, sweet atmosphere? Will he not as assiduously cultivate the love of Jesus, making it an abiding principle in his home, as he will assert his claims to authority? Let every husband and father study to understand the words of Christ not in a one-sided manner, merely dwelling upon the subjection of the wife to her husband, but in the light of the cross of Calvary. Study as to his own position in the family circle. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. Jesus gave himself up to die upon the cross in order that he might cleanse and keep us apart from all sin and pollution by the influence of the Holy Spirit. We must have the Spirit of God or we can never have harmony in the home. The wife, if she has the Spirit of Christ, 
will be careful of her words. She will control her spirit. She will be submissive, and yet will not feel that she is a bond slave, but a companion to her husband. If the husband is a servant of God, he will not lord it over his wife. He will not be arbitrary and exacting. We cannot cherish home affection with too much care. For the home, if the Spirit of the Lord dwells there, is a type of heaven. If one errs, the other will exercise Christ-like forbearance and not draw coldly away. Neither the husband nor the wife should attempt to exercise over the other an arbitrary control. Do not try to compel each other to yield to your wishes. You cannot do this and retain each other's love. Be kind, patient, and forbearing, considerate, and courteous. By the grace of God, you can succeed in making each other happy, as in your marriage vow you promise to do. Let each graciously yield. In the married life, men and women sometimes act like undisciplined, perverse children. The husband wants his way, and the wife wants her way and neither is willing to yield. Such a condition of things can bring only the greatest unhappiness. Both husband and wife should be willing to yield his or her way or opinion. There is no possibility of happiness while they both persist in doing as they please. Unless men and women have learned of Christ, his meekness and lowliness, they will reveal the impulsive, unreasonable spirit so often revealed by children. The strong, undisciplined will will seek to rule. Such ones need to study the words of Paul. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Adjusting Family Difficulties It is a hard matter to adjust family difficulties. Even when husband and wife seek to make a fair and just settlement in regard to their several duties, if they have failed to submit the heart to God, how can husband and wife divide the interest of their home life and still keep a loving, firm hold upon each other? They should have a united interest in all that concerns their homemaking, and the wife, if a Christian, will have an interest with her husband as his companion. For the husband is to stand as the head of the household. Counsel to Discordant Families your spirit is wrong. When you take a position, you do not weigh the matter well and consider what must be the effect of your maintaining your views and in an independent manner weaving them into your prayers and conversation when you know that your wife does not hold the same views that you do. Instead of respecting the feelings of your wife and kindly avoiding as a gentleman would, those subjects upon which you know you differ, you have been forward to dwell upon objectionable points and have manifested a persistency in expressing your views regardless of any around you. You have felt that others had no right to see matters differently from yourself. These fruits do not grow upon the Christian tree. My brother... My sister, open the door of the heart to receive Jesus. Invite him into the soul temple. Help each other to overcome the obstacles which enter the married life of all. You will have a fierce conflict to overcome your adversary, the devil. And if you expect God to help you in this battle, 
you must both unite in deciding to overcome, to seal your lips against speaking any words of wrong, even if you have to fall upon your knees and cry aloud, Lord, rebuke the adversary of my soul. Christ in each heart will bring unity. If the will of God is fulfilled, the husband and wife will respect each other and cultivate love and confidence. Anything that would mar the peace and unity of the family should be firmly repressed, and kindness and love should be cherished. He who manifests the spirit of tenderness, forbearance, and love will find that the same spirit will be reflected upon him. Where the Spirit of God reigns, there will be no talk of unsuitability in the marriage relation. If Christ indeed is formed within the hope of glory, there will be a union and love in the home. Christ abiding in the heart of the wife will be at agreement with Christ abiding in the heart of the husband. There will be striving together for the mansions Christ has gone to prepare for those who love him.